Aerobic Table Tennis at Home. Have fun, keep fit, learn table tennis. Today's session is bat skills on the table. Have fun. Hello and welcome to day eight of Aerobic Table Tennis at Home. Today's session is all about bat skills on the table. Now, not many people are lucky enough to have a table tennis table at home. Even I don't have a table tennis table at home. So if you do, you're very, very lucky. However, I do have a dining table and that's just it. We can use almost any table at all in order to be able to play table tennis. All we need to do is adapt a few things and off we go. The first thing we could do is use an expandable net. Look at that. It fits almost any size table. If you don't have one of these, head over to tsport.com and you can purchase one online and off you go. However, most homes do have books and the books are going to become your net. Very simple. We find the center of the book and open it like this and then place it in the center of the table. Books in a line and that becomes your net. Genius. As you can see, we have some cups, just one, two, three cups. These are plastic unbreakable cups and I do recommend you use unbreakable cups because we will be doing something called hit the targets and the cups will fall onto the floor. So that's it. Day eight of aerobic table tennis at home, bat skills on the table. Let's go. Before we begin the bat skills on the table, I want you to go back to hopefully the early videos that you've seen of aerobic table tennis at home. And let's go back to the shake hand grip. In order to perform the bat skills well, and the hit the targets later on in the session, you do need to keep that nice grip. And that is this side, your thumb goes along the bottom of the bat. On the other side, your finger also goes along the bottom of the bat. If your finger is in the middle, when you're performing the bat skills, the ball might hit your finger. So keep it along the bottom. Same with your thumb, if it's in the middle, the ball's going to hit the thumb. So please keep it along the bottom of the bat with that nice shake hand grip. Okay, the first exercise, using the shake hand grip, turn your bat like this with your thumb on top your thumb should be looking towards the ceiling. This is the forehand side. We're going to practice the forehand bounce. I'll give you a little bit of advice that should help you complete the exercise very well. The first thing is keep the bat in a flat position. The second is the height of the bounce. Don't bounce real high. You need to bounce low, maybe around five or six inches. And this should help you to keep good control. And the second piece of advice, especially for you children, I always say, tap it, don't whack it. If you tap it, you'll keep good control. Let's see. As you can see, the bat is in a flat position. This only allows the ball to travel up and down and you keep good control. And the height of the ball is only going around five or six inches. And this way, we'll keep good control without the ball falling to the floor. The next exercise, we're going to turn the bat around this way with your finger on top. And this is the backhand side. You're going to bounce the ball the same side as your finger. Once again, the bat in a flat position, the shake hand grip, and the height of the ball only around five or six inches. Let's go. Okay, moving on to a more difficult exercise. We call this the switch. We switch from this side to this side. Forehand, backhand, forehand, backhand. We switch each time we strike the ball. It looks like this. 
Don't forget, between each stroke, to have the bat in a flat position, allowing the ball to only travel up and down, and you will keep good control. Okay, your first challenge. Let's go for 20 forehand bounds, the same side as your thumb. Let's go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Moving on to the backhand side, twenty backhands. Let's go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Very good. Now we're going to play the switch. This is more difficult. You need to have good concentration. These exercises are excellent for hand-eye coordination and concentration, using the brain, using the mind. Okay, let's see. We'll do 20 all together, which would be 10 each side. Let's go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. If you completed those exercises without the ball falling to the floor, well done. But maybe it was too easy. Why don't we go up in tens? Start with ten, then go to twenty, thirty, forty, fifty, sixty, seventy. 80, 90, no way, 100, give it a try. Once you've become good at doing those particular skills, why don't you make it more difficult and make a progression? So let's try maybe hitting the ball five times before allowing it to bounce onto the table. Let's go using the forehand side. Change to the backhand side. Now let's play the switch after five. bring in some movement and by that I mean we're going to move around the table and perform the back skills at the same time. We're going to begin though with the forehand balance so no bouncing let's try to bounce the ball walking around the table trying not to let the ball fall to the floor. Keep the bat in a nice flat position Keep good concentration and keep your eye on the ball. Next, we'll do the backhand balance, same side as your finger. Change to four hand bounce. Change to back hand bounce. Change to the switch. Next, let's use the table. When you reach the net, you need to hit the ball over the net and then continue. Let's go. First using the forehand.
change to backhand. And change to the switch. When you've practiced, it's always good to have a progression. So the next progression could be that we bounce the ball five times, walking around the table, and you allow the ball to bounce onto the table after the fifth hit. Let's go. Change to the backhand side. Change to the switch. If you're a beginner, making the transition from the forehand to the backhand is not that easy. So this next exercise should help you to make that transition from the forehand to the backhand. Again, we're going to use letting the ball bounce once onto the table. You're going to go forehand, backhand, bounce. Forehand, backhand, bounce. You can also allow the ball to bounce three times on each side before bouncing onto the table. It goes like this. Another exercise we can try, you need to have good concentration for this one and this is another one where you need to tap it, don't whack it. Using the forehand, that's the same side as the thumb, we're going to strike the ball in a downwards direction. Let's see. Okay, to make it more difficult, let's use the table. Let's perform the forehand hit, walking around the table. Of course, when you reach the net, you need to pass it over each time. Let's go.
all these skills, they might seem easy. However, they are great to help you improve your hand-eye coordination. Remember earlier I told you we need some unbreakable cups? Well, here we go, let's have some fun. Place the cups like this, one on the left hand side, one in the centre and one on the right hand side. The first exercise we're going to do the forehand balance. That's the same side as your thumb, no hitting, balancing. We need to walk around the table and place the ball into the cup without the cup falling onto the floor and without the ball falling onto the floor. Let's see. Let's continue and do the next two cups. Whoopsie. I love it when I miss. A progression from the forehand balance could be the forehand hit. So we need once again to move around the table playing the forehand bounce. We need to take control of the ball like this and then place it into the cups. Let's do all three. Let's go. The backhand hit. Then finally, let's try the switch. Very difficult. Don't forget, take control of the ball before placing it into the cup. Let's see. A good idea to include all of the family if you're all in the same household together during the lockdown. Brothers, sisters, mums, dads, grandmas, granddads. Let's have a competition on who can do the bat skills, placing the balls in one, two, three cups in the fastest time. 
he's going to be your winner. Okay, so now it's time for some real fun. We're going to play Hit the Targets. I do suggest if you're a beginner to use your backhand side and that's the same side as your forefinger like this and you strike the ball this side. We're going to let the ball bounce onto the table, one, and then hit. And we're going to try and hit one of the cups. I'm going to try and hit the one on the left hand side. Let's see. Nice shot. If you're lucky enough to have three table tennis balls, why don't we try to hit one, two, three without missing? Once you've played hit the targets using the backhand side, then maybe you could try using the forehand side. That's the same side as your thumb. So you strike the ball like this. Let's see. Let's go for the one on the left hand side. Nice shot. Another fun thing to do using the cups is place one of the cups in the center of the net and we're going to try and roll the ball using the bat and the ball, hit, roll along the table and try to land the ball into the cup. Let's see. Another fun exercise, we're going to hit the ball using the forehand side, allowing the ball to bounce onto the table, bounce, 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 and try to get the ball to land inside the cup. Let's see. How about this for a challenge? One bat, one ball, one egg cup. A table tennis ball is a similar size to an egg. It just fits inside the cup. It's very tight. Here's your challenge. Place the egg cup onto the table. Hit with the forehand allowing the ball to bounce, bounce, bounce and try to get it land inside the egg cup. Good luck with this one. <laughs>